the excavation of Trelloc um, in, in about 10 days. Um, and also, if anyone is interested, we, we've, we've, as of, we, we've as of now started our ghost walks and we did one on the excavation we, we, of Trelloc. We, we, did, we did one on um, Friday and we've got another one next Friday at Cowbridge if anyone's interested in that. Yeah? Oh, uh, Carl, sorry to interrupt. Did you, have you heard anything more about what Jill posted online about the house field? They were um, surveying it apparently last last week, I think she said. Ah, yes. It's right um, behind her house. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a standard university training um, survey for, for their students. All right. Okay. Just they're, 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 they're not going to start developing there or anything. It's, there's nothing unusual. It's it's a university training. No, I just decision. wondered if there'd been anything, yeah, found. You know, anything different found. Ah, uh, no. It's just it's just it's just the type of thing that they do to train the students every now and again. And it's a, it's a perfect okay. it's a perfect location. Um, it's a perfect location for, for them to train them. So that's good. So um, uh, and um, Jim will know. Jim, there, there's been um, there's been a very po positive outcome to the um, to the inquiry at the museum, but I'm not going to say any more than that. Uh, mention mentioning people from Cardiff, yeah. Um, so I'm just getting something set up in the background, and there we go. We're ready. We're ready to rock and roll. Right, let's go. So. Um, let's, let's record this one, two, three, and, and let me get one full screen, a speaker screen. Good. And recording. <coughs> so we, we're going to do a topic this week that, that I've done, um, that, that we did on Tuesday uh, that I've also looked at twice on the weekend. Uh, so, and, and today we, we're looking at the location of Roanoke. Now, uh, it's very interesting that every single person, um, if, if we move this, and every single person who's actually seen this diagram behind has said that there's a TARDIS there, and there's also another TARDIS over there as well, poking out, right? Which, which is a really interesting thing, because the people that were based at Roan Oak, living at Roan Oak, disappeared. So you can imagine, they all jumped into the TARDIS with Doctor Who, uh, and they all disappeared, right? This actually this actually makes sounds as well, when you open the door. Sorry, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a bit of a geek when it comes to that stuff, right? So, um, and with, with Roanoke, we've not only got um, the numbers from one colony disappearing, but they go back and they establish another colony and they disappear, and and then then there's loads of really interesting things associated with Roanoke, which we're going to look at today. So where is Roanoke, you may ask. So what I'm going to do is share the images that I've actually just got in front of me, and there you go. So R Roanoke was a stab. It can only be said the best stab that we had to compete with the Spanish. Um, so Walter Raleigh was tasked, the Sir Walter Raleigh, in the 1580s to establish a permanent colony in the Americas. Now, the only place that they could go to in the Americas was actually North America. And the first stab that they made was in the Virginias, basically uh, known as the Virginias. It was in North Carolina, right? So that was the first- Freezing, Carl. I'm freezing. Am I freezing, Keith? Uh, only one picture showing. Only one. What what picture is showing? Uh, the uh, the beach and with the little ship and the natives running away. But I'm sounding okay, am I? You're sounding all right, yeah. So how am yeah, I? Yeah, it must be my connection. I think uh, it, it is. You you. Yeah. Uh, Chris, 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 it's your connection. Look, our connection today is is not as firm as it usually is, right? <laughs> I I know I know ups I I know I upset you by not paying for the meal that we had the other week, right? I I, I know, but. That's I know, like, I was gutted. Yeah, I know. Do you know, am I one of the only people to actually take a woman for a Valentine's meal and ask her to pay for it? <laughs> yes. But I, it's like, I, I, no, strange enough, I didn't see her after that. <laughs> um, <coughs> anyway, Roanoke. So, 
Wait, well, it, it, you, you, you interrupted me at an important point as well, Chris. I'm sorry, I didn't hear any of it, you see, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, the rest of us don't really care. Oh, we do, we do. But anyway, the, so it was it was Britain's, it was England's, not Britain's, because Britain really didn't um, exist as a concept at that point. So um, it was England's best stab at establishing a colony. And this colony was meant to redress the balance of colonial ambitions um, on the planet, because the Spanish had, had grabbed their chunks of South south america and central america and the portuguese and the portuguese were dabbling in um the likes of uh, benin and um, um africa so you know the the english wanted their bits and it it was it was their opportunity they 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 reached out for um for um, north carolina as it is called today the old virginias um and they there was this island there which which has probably been known as roan oak um and one scene that you can see in front of us might might be um a, a little boat um entering the shoreline of the island at roan oak where there's all these with great respect but using the terms of the age savages wandering around the beach um but that was probably unlikely the case Ro roanoke was probably occupied by small groups of people um it's not a massive island and Ro roanoke was the place that they decided to establish a colony it was going to be it was going to be very similar in the vein that we looked at when we had the lecture about um, the darian isthmus well we looked at the darian isthmus and if any of you remember that it, it it's that strip of land that heads out of uh, um, South America um, into Central America um, and it was going to be Darien it was going to be the place that the Scottish were going to establish a colony um, and it completely failed and that was in the late 1690s so 1698 um, and that was the Scots attempt to establish um, an empire but this here was an attempt of the English to establish an empire. Both um, expeditions failed for different reasons, um, and we really don't we really don't know what happened at Roanoke in the history. But we've got a feeling that we know what happened at Roanoke in the archaeology. And what is even confusing is the information about Roanoke may have been hidden f from obvious view uh, until 2012 by the original chap who established um, the second colony here a guy by the name of John White he created a map and he wrote on that map in, in, um, in Indian ink yeah he did write on that map in Indian ink but he actually wrote on that map in invisible ink as well and we're starting to find out that when he was writing in invisible ink he was actually indicating where the colonists of Roanoke actually went to after they abandoned Roanoke. And there's a story about his granddaughter and all these other things and they went off and so on and so on. So that, that, that gives you a massive overview about what Roanoke is about. And the archaeology does come into its own really because the archaeology tells a story that the history, other than what John White left on the maps, the archaeology tells us more than the historians could ever tell us. So you you can imagine um, you you can imagine um, in London, it's a theatrical uh, scene here. Um, you can you can imagine in London um, there could be the proclamation of um, um, Sir Walter Raleigh to come with us to establish a colony, um, and this is going to be the new way of things, and we're going to go out and make England great, and so on. But after, it could be said, after five years, the whole project had been deemed a complete disaster. But we are talking about a period that we know a little bit about, don't we? Because we're talking about 1588 and 1589. Now, if anyone knows anything about 1588 and 1589, they will know about the Spanish Armada and they will know about the English Armada. On both occasions, large numbers of ships were lost 
from I from both the sides involved in the, those two conflicts, meaning that if they were to keep the colony going in North Carolina, they couldn't, because a war was deemed more important between Spain and England than it was to help these colonists improve and to move further with their colony. It's it's a it's it's not as dark a story as as you may think. Now I'm I'm um I've been catching up with the with the X Files series. Um and I'm sure somewhere on X Files you, you're gonna have Mulder and Skelly go into Roanoke Island trying to work out why the colony disappeared. But back when they were writing the likes of X Files, um they didn't have the information that we've got now, which was found in two thousand and twelve. So there there we go. Um the old, the old Virginia's um, North um, North Carolina. There she is. There's North Carolina, and there's Roanoke Island. Now, what is very interesting on this is that this Roanoke is protected from from stormy seas by this sort of out, outer bank, by these outer islands, right? But it's in the Pamlico Sound, which which offers great fishing. So I've used two. Two interesting words there, great fishing and protection from storms. It's an island, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's another good thing about it, right? Um, but the colonists went somewhere else. Now, <coughs> another thing that's of interest to me is that word um, Hatteras Island. Now, we do mention Hatteras Island in regards to... What the hell was that? Um, we do mention... What, what, what do... What's that, love? Hatteras. All right. Get it right, man. For God's sake. You've been there, haven't you? Been past there. All right. We'll do it. Hatteras. Are you okay with that one? Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad you are. You know, God, I, I would really hate it if I ever upset you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. yeah. So, Hatteras Island. Hatteras does sound better, though. Anyway, Hatteras Island. Now, the reason... You've interrupted at an important point as well. What is it? A day of interruptions at Important Points Day? Um, Hatter um, Hatteras Island was a site that was excavated and extensive survey work by the same guy who excavated at Darien, um, Professor Mark Horton, who's actually a friend of mine. And um, <coughs> Hatteras... Um, oh... Hatteras, Hatteras Island. <laughs> he did actually find interesting archaeological evidence that might actually relate to Roanoke. But you know, mm. Mark, Mark, Mark Horton's excavating um, at Hatteras Island in the context of the last decade or so. So everything that we we're starting to understand about what happened to the people of Roanoke is coming in the past decade or so, and it's so good that we've got. Mark Horton, the same guy who's worked on the Scottish colony, he's also worked on the English colony. Now, there is a reason why I mentioned about the Robinsons figures um, to start off with. Because I mentioned that for a reason, because we've all got interpretation. An interpretation of things change over times. So you would think that uh, the, those those figures that we would um, call Gollywog figures were acceptable back in the 70s and 80s, but now they're not acceptable in society. But that's that's conception of things changing over time and meaning of things changing over time. Now, when when we look at <coughs> Roanoke, it's always been said in an American context. Yeah, it's always been portrayed that Roanoke is, is part of the American psyche. <coughs> but in many ways, is part of the English psyche as well. It's an English colony. Um, and it's, it's an English colony in the context that it was an English colony and it ceased to become an English colony. And it's the same when you look at Darien. The Darien expedition was a failure as well. And that was a Scottish colony. 
It's not ever seen as an American colony or a, a, a Panama colony or anything like that. And I think when we look at Roanoke, we should we should own the um, context of the archaeology at Roanoke. It's not uh, it's not I would say part of American psyche. It's part of English and British psyche. So that's the point I'd like to make. So let's own this bit of archaeology. Let let's let's see the archaeology for what it is, and the archaeological archaeological evidence at Hatteras Island. I need to say Hatteras Island there. So, you know, I've got to be honest with you, right? I hope people are going to be correcting me on these Native American tribal names as well. Called the Chawanoak people and the Wepanoak people and the Chepanoak people and the Masaratoak people. They were actually quite good, actually. Um, I'm not going to try the others. But anyway, so interesting enough, we've got, we've got those triangles on this little map there illustrate some of the local tribal people's names and but what we do know as well now this is this is key to our understanding of what's going on at Roanoke what those, those tribal people were forced to move away by other westerners later on they were all forced out of their homes most of them and and I'm gonna say something very strange the 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 archaeology associated with these people the context of the archaeology moved away with these tribes as well and what we mean by that if if the Roanoke Island people entered into the Chapa Chapanok tribe or the Das Mun Kapeak tribe those th that DNA that evidence would have moved away with that tribe somewhere into the rest of North America so we, we've lost any DNA links with anybody that actually moved away from Roanoke. What I'm saying, I'm giving, I'm giving away um, the end of what I'm trying to present today. In other words, what we feel is that is in most indications is that the people of Roanoke weren't wiped out by some kind of major massacre. The archaeological and the historical thinking and the likes of Professor Mark Horton is that these people entered into tribes living with these tribes, influencing those tribes, and that information went away when these tribes moved further into North America. So maybe I've given a bit too much away um, at this point. So, um, so Roanoke. Now this is actually a very interesting map because this is being created not long after, and if anyone's wondering what these little things are up here, uh, these are actually little islands and we've got a circular so we'll, we'll the, the obviously this is actually zoomed in from a very little image so what we've got we've got this um, colony here which which represents what we've got behind me uh, different representations of buildings that I feel on the one behind me is actually wrong um, and then what you've got is you've got these fields so they, they've got um, wheat fields growing wheat fields planted by these people so the, these fields are growing so you've got indications that they've got food right they're growing their own food from this plant the other thing as well is down here on the on the other map that we're going to actually look at there's actually an eel trap so this is significant and within the landscape within the other wider map it actually shows fishing areas associated with this colony so when, when you look at Roanoke and you start to try and understand Roanoke, the first thing it says is that people are starving to death and he need, needed to move elsewhere. And the answer is that's not exactly true. Because even this illustration shows fishing boats and fields of, of, of foodstuffs that they can eat. So all of this is really, really interesting and vital evidence to try and understand what's going on at Roanoke. So what I'm going to do, I've got my my wonderful notes in front of me, which I'm going to look at and Roanoke lost colony. So this was this could be said to be a vain attempt, a, an attempt of great vanity on the side of Sir Walter Raleigh and of great vanity in regards to a very gracious queen, Queen Elizabeth I. But I think what was happening is that Queen Elizabeth was panicking. She could see that the Spanish had these great empires. And when I say the Spanish had these great empires, plural, 
you know, they had their empire in Europe. They had their empire in the Americas. You know, Queen Elizabeth was a was a thumb prick in the overall English psyche. And she wanted to be so much more than that. And she said, look, you can imagine um, the, the, the conversation with Sir Walter Raleigh. Look, my 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 wonderful man, because she she liked him very much. Um, would you go out and prove your love to me and go out and establish an English colony in the Americas? And when you come back, I will marry you. Uh, I don't, she wouldn't have said that at all. But maybe she did say that, yeah? But anyway, so Walter Raleigh was tasked with establishing uh, this colony um, in, in, in North Carolina. It was under royal per, uh, prerogative. And it was to be the first major colony to be established in the Americas by the English. There was a little colony um, established by a Humphrey Gilbert uh, at St. John's, Newfoundland in 1583. But this, this one was to be the big one. Right. This was to be the bee's knees. This was to be something very, very special. Just as like, 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 we're building this to try and compare it with compare, compare it with Darien and the, the likes of Mark Horton's work at Darien. Um, the Darien project in the 50, 1590s uh, started again 1690s, 1690s, 100 years later. <clears throat> the Scottish, the Scottish really invested everything into it. The Darien project, they, all their ideas of prestige, all their ideas of empire, their last chance of being great. And and by 1707, um, we know that the Darien uh, project failed, and uh, you know there was the a unity between Scotland and England, and 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 that was that. Now. It could be said that Roanoke could have been the last stab of Queen Elizabeth to be this great queen, this great leader. Because if the if the Armada, if both Armadas had gone south at a greater level, Queen Elizabeth would have probably been replaced as the monarch of England um, and probably replaced by a Scotsman. You, you can imagine that, that that's that's what's happening. This is what's at risk. Roanoke failed, but it, but because of the Spanish Armada failing um, a few few years after him, the English Armada um, failing, and there was a bit of a stalemate. Nobody really had a, a navy to do anything. Everything sort of settled itself out, um, and then eventually we would then, when I say we, the English would then establish this great empire themselves in the 1600s um, and that would be then history so the island that you can see was to be <coughs> the place of a colony with its own governor a chap by the name of Ralph Lane and he would go out with Sir Walter Raleigh in 1585 now this Ralph Lane would be charged with the 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 new um the new stab of empire but this would absolutely fail um it, it would be a complete failure i'll give you a little bit more information about that now it would it'd be a catastrophic failure um and they would lead another attempt in 1587 under a chap by the name of john white to establish a second colony on roan oak only to find out that those that were left behind by Sir Walter Raleigh and Ralph Lane had disappeared. And then the, the colony of 1587, by 1590, everyone from that colony had subsequently um, disappeared without any kind of explanation. <clears throat> so that's a bit of an overview. Now, Lane's, the, the original colony of 1585, and may I note, in the archaeology, we've got very little to tell us from Roan Oak about the fate of these people, the, these colonists. Now, mark my words, very little in the way of archaeological evidence from Roan Oak, but the archaeology is elsewhere, um, as we've mentioned at um, Hatteras Island. It's said that Ralph Lane's colony was troubled by a lack of supplies and poor relations with the local Native Americans. While waiting a delayed resupply mission, 
um, um, by this by a chap by the name of Richard Grenville. Um, Lane decided to abandon the colony and return to England with um, Sir Francis Drake in 1586 after being there a year. Um, Grenville arrived two weeks later and left a small detachment to protect Sir Walter, Walter Raleigh's um, claim. And that small detachment would be the detachment that would disappear. We have no idea what happened to those men. Um, I've no idea of the size of that detachment. But those men, just men, would disappear. And then in 1587, Raleigh sent a certain John White, who would become very famous, to this story. On an expedition to establish the city of um, Raleigh um, in Shakespeare Bay. However, during a stop to check on Grenville's men, flagship pilot Simon Fernand insisted that White's colonists should remain on Roanoke. White, however, returned to England and Fernandez intended to bring more supplies back to the colony in 1588. So in other words, um, instead of going where they were meant to go, they actually ended up at Roanoke um, and they went to check on Grenville's men. Um, they only come across this vessel um, and the Grenville's men that had been on the island were nowhere to be seen. So... So what happened in regards to Roanoke is that um, the Anglo-Spanish War that would actually bring supplies back to Roanoke delayed John White's return to Roanoke until 1590. And on his arrival, he found that the settlement, um, the fortified settlement, was completely abandoned. And this is where history comes into its own. It was completely abandoned. So we've got those few men disappearing from the first expedition. We've got... Uh, those 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 men, women and children completely disappeared from the second expedition that went there with John White in 1587. The fate of the approximately 120 odd colonists remains unknown, but we've got an idea today. Speculation that they had assimilated with nearby Native American communities appears in writing as early as 1605. Investigations by the um, by the Jamestown colonists um, later on produced reports that the Roanoke settlers had been massacred based on no evidence as well as stories of people with European features in Native American villages but no hard evidence was produced and, the, and that evidence disappeared and then after the 1600s the, the story of Roanoke completely disappeared into the ether. Interest into the matter fell into decline until the 1830s when there was talk about a certain John White's infant granddaughter, Virginia Dare, um, who had been left behind by a grandfather in 1587 with his um, own daughter. And it's discussed that, in fact, John White's granddaughter, Virginia Dare, if she did survive was the first European to be born in North America, right? So she would become the first American in North America. You can see where we're going with this, can't you? Where are the Native Americans in this story, which, which I've been asked? Despite this renewed interest, modern, modern research still not produced the archaeological evidence necessary to solve the mystery, but we do have that information solved when where we go on to the archaeological stuff after the break. So, let's have a little look at some images. So, going to everything that we've seen, uh, we're particularly interested in the second colony and what happened to those colonists, 120 of them, including John White's own granddaughter, born in North America, uh, being the first true um, European to be born in North America. Interesting facts. There were two different colonies that settled on Roanoke Island. We've already discussed that. The first one was made up of mostly men who only stayed for one year. Then a garrison was left behind. They disappeared. Um, and then you've got the, the, the people who were there from 1587. And then the other disappeared in 1590. Interesting facts. Crowanatoan was the only thing left. And what we mean by that... Now, this is one thing I can't really get. I, I'm aware that there were two carvings left behind. 
and I'm not exactly sure if the word Cro Anatoan was left behind. We know that the word C-R-O was carved on a piece of wood, but I'm not exactly sure the full word in Cro Anatoan was actually carved, but um, we know that there's two carvings anyway. So we'll go that the, one of the carvings was Croa and one of the words was Cro Anatoan. Uh, with my doubt placed into there. So when we with the flow, Kroanatoan is believed to be the name given to a local tribe. And that may have been carved on the tree by John White's own daughter to actually indicate where they had gone to. So, and that date of 1583 is wrong, it's 1585. So, um, Roan Oak Colony. So in 1587, as I say, the figures are very varied, just repeating what we've said. Um, 120, 121 colonists, led by John White, arrived on Roanoke Island in present-day North Carolina to establish a colony. This was not where the colony was first to be established, I may add again. As tensions mounted with the native population, however, John White returned to England in order to solicit reinforcements. How those tensions arose and what those tensions were about, we don't know. And it's believed that one of the key reasons why those individuals left from Roanoke Island was simply because they were invited by the tribe, the, the um, Kroanatoan, to um, assist them in wars with other tribes. That's been suggested, but it's got no foundation. When he returned several years later, as we know, the, the, the site was deserted with no signs of a struggle and no remains to be found anywhere. The settlement became known as the Lost Colony and none of its members were ever seen again. However, we've got all that talk. And, and the one thing is what, that we do know is that every single piece of building had been removed. Everything was gone. Every, you know, other than the timber that created the stockade, right, even... There, there was no crops, no nothing left behind when when they arrived there, um, and this is this this is the key point to all of this. So, again, <clears throat> one one of one of the things that I mentioned was that it's it's very likely, is very very likely that the colony failed from fifteen eighty seven. The second time and the colony failed at Darien because the men chose to bring their families with them now I had somebody having a right go at me on Tuesday night and they basically said oh what you're saying is that women weren't capable of doing all these things that men were capable of doing but the fact of the matter is the first loyalty of a man would be to his family not the colony the first thing he would think about would be to keep his family safe and the reason why, uh, the reason for up until recently, the reason why we didn't have women in the British Army was it was believed by senior officers that we would care more about keeping the women safe um, than the pride of um, the soldiers fighting. Um, so then that was seen to be nonsense and women have turned out to be really um, extraordinary um, good soldiers on the front line. However, this, this old attitude about um you know families and all the rest of it and it proved to be a failing in darien and we discussed this when we looked at darien if they had just sent soldiers out to create this colony to make sure everything was working build roads build houses and then they bring their families over the colony may have succeeded and we see that raised when we look at darien and that's not a chauvinistic a attitude from me you know i'm not chauvinistic but i just wanted to put that into the case of the local people from that day now <clears throat> so there, there's lots of information about the the, the first expedition and you know there, there's there, this thing about the, the the lost colony so so despite the desertion of lane's colony raleigh was persuaded to make another attempt you know it was a sense of pride how can we fail we cannot fail we cannot fail this is so walter raleigh you know, we had established this colony, it didn't work, well, we've come back, and you can imagine, the Queen is livid. You know, this is about national pride, um, Sir Walter Raleigh. This is, this is something special. We need to compete with the Spanish. Go back out there and establish a new colony. Well, Sir Walter Raleigh doesn't, he doesn't go himself. 
he, he actually sends this John White character. Um, and John White was cited with establishing uh, the city of Raleigh. Um, and White, John White, was going to be the governor. And he, he went with um, 115 people, um, including White's pregnant daughter, Eleanor, and her husband, um, and Ananias Dare. And this, this sounds absolute crazy, but I think White was trying to prove a point. He's taken his family with him. So, you know, he's not going to leave like Sir Walter Raleigh did, right? He's going to... He's going to do something, you know, he's going to he's going to make a um, his, his pledge is his family in the colony. Um, and these these were all these were all largely middle class Londoners uh, with a few landed gentry. And there was three vessels. Um, it usually turns out to be the, the, the three vessels that go on these expeditions. Um, so you've got a flagship known as the Lion, and which was captained by White, and you've you've got two other vessels that go out, and they depart on May the eighth. Now, what is what is interesting to this story is another point I made on Tuesday, is that they managed to get to the colony by July the twenty second. The Americas isn't a massive distance away. You could probably get there in six weeks. They took two months to get there, but it's not a massive distance away. Um, and I'm thinking that. Um, maybe they could have sent maybe they could have sent supply ships um, at that point that they were waiting between 1587 and 1590 it's only two months it's only two months away it's not a massive distance it's not as if you go into the Easter Island um, so so um, <clears throat> so basically what happened is that they, they this this colony they, they they got to the they got to the fort um, and strangely enough, the, the fort had been completely dismantled. Um, and but the, the the first the first the first fort that had been uh, dismantled of the first fort of the first colony, some of the houses had stood at that point. But when in regards to the second colony, no, nothing stood um, and some overgrown melons still grew. But the interesting point being made the interesting point being made, there was no sign that Grenville's men had ever been had ever been there except for human bones that White believed were the remains of one of them killed by Native Americans. But other than that, there was nothing else there. It was very, very strange. Um, so what what happened was that the 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 local tribe, the um, um, Croatan tribe they decided that they were going to uh, um, ask the uh, Croatan tribe um, for some kind of a truce so that they could actually work together. But there was this thought that there, there, there were problems. There, there was thought that there were problems. And, and you know, White decided to return back to the United Kingdom um, for assistance, leaving his own daughter and his granddaughter along with the rest of the colonists to fend for themselves which is which is quite bizarre to be honest with you I, I certainly wouldn't leave my own daughter behind and I certainly wouldn't leave my granddaughter behind there's no way would I do that so there, there was obviously reasons why he left his his, his own kin behind um, so when he arrived back in England in 1587 leaving everybody else behind um, the Spanish Armada had mobilized and and um, and it was it, it was discussed with Queen Elizabeth that she prohibited any able ship from leaving Britain so that they might participate in the coming battle. So this basically meant that there was to be no relief mission at all. There was going to be no relief mission. Um, and then what happened because of the Armada in 1588 and the, Arma the English Armada in 1589 both men, as I've already said, that, um, you know, it, it, it was a matter um, that, you know, there was no ships available to, to go there any earlier. So 1590, um, it was decided that a fleet of six ships um, head um, in 1590 for the Caribbean to raid Spanish outposts. Two ships headed for Croatoan Island on August the 12th. And there was there was no indication 
Um, there was no indication of anyone being there. There, there was absolutely nothing. Um, there, there was no signs of any buildings. There was no signs of um, any loss of life. Um, there, there, it was, it, it was, it was very, very odd. It was very, very odd. When, when they, you know, they, they entered the settlement on the morning of August the 18th, his granddaughter's third birthday, and the party found um, fresh tracks in the sands, but not any contact with, with any of the survivors. Uh, there was this wood croa um, carved, um, croa toan, um, into one of the posts. As I say, there was two carvings. It's trying to work out whether both of them had the word CRO on them or one of them had CRO and the other one had Croatoan on it. Obviously, none of it actually survived. Um, the Palisade still stood, but the search party found that the houses had been completely dismantled. The houses had been taken down. They, they had, um, you know, and anything that could be carried had been removed, even the pottery. Now, that's really interesting that even the pottery had been removed, even, even you know, the the buildings had been dismantled. They hadn't have been set alight. Now this this is really really interesting, very very in, in, interesting. Um, and what I, what we're going to do? We're going to look at some more images now. And there was there was an investigation by Sir Walter Raleigh, um, who in 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 the, this is this is another bit of the story that people don't know much about. That in 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 the fifteen nineties, um, Sir Walter Raleigh. Um, decided on the accounts of John White to send out an expedition in, in 1595 but also on the back of also finding El Dorado so you can imagine they, they probably got to Rono found nobody again for the second time because there was nobody there um, and basically that was it, it, it the, the everything everything was abandoned there was there was no um, there, there was no other thought to this and, and, and that's how the story that's how the story lies. Now, that that's where it should stop, and that that's where we should have the end of the story. But, but it's not the end of the story. So, so what we need to do is <clears throat> think that the colonists of the age would have looked something like this, and they would have had blonde hair, blue eyes, very very pale skinned, um, a ragtag load of colonists, but. <clears throat> they wouldn't have been a ragtag load of colonists. Remember, they, they'd only been... It was 1587. It was only 1590. And wherever they'd gone between 1587 and 1590, their clothes wouldn't have been in this state. They, they, would, have had, they, they would have had clothes to, move, uh, to dress into. And, and everything that they moved with them... I, I, there's, I, they must have had some kind of traction. They must have had horses or, or mules or something like that. But um, we, I don't have any of those details. So, <clears throat> so the disappearance, so reiterating, so after the war ended, he returned. Um, he discovered that everyone was gone and all the houses, gardens and farms were deserted. Gardens, everything's removed. There's nothing growing there either, you know. When you plant, usually plant something like, um, like wheat, um, um, oats, barley, you know, there's usually, there's, there's usually some of the grain that ends back back in the soil and rejuvenates, and the next year we, that happens. But there, there was no signs of any of that at all. So this is this is rather interesting. This this is the this is the um, impression um, that we have of the settlement, and I think this was put together a, a few years later. Um, but John White's map wasn't put together a few years later. John's White John White's map was probably put together. Uh, within months of him getting back to the colony in 1590. So one thing you can actually see by this, um, you can actually clearly see that you've got fishing grounds, um, and this is a fishing smack of some description. Um, and then you've got this eel trap here, and you've got these fields. Um, so, so the point is, is if anyone, if anyone makes out that there was no food, food had run out and you know that people were starving and they had to go somewhere else why why weren't they eating the fish you know why weren't they eating the eels um and then then i then i was discussing this on monday on tuesday and um, one of my gang on tuesday turned around and he said um he said look carl 
people can't survive on fish alone. And if, if their crops are failing, then they're going need to need to move elsewhere. And I actually said, actually, that's, that's nonsense. Surely you can survive on eating fish and eel. Um, and then the argument came back at me. And there it is. There's Hatteras Island there. there, there that's the place of the excavations of um, our friend Professor Mark Horton. There it is. And um, it's showing lots of ships that have, have been hit, hit, um, hit in reefs along the coast. But I, I don't think... I, it said that there was a storm and that storm forced the people to move away. But then again, storms don't last forever. And, you know, it, it, the, lots of the reasons given don't seem to be sound. <clears throat> but, but there is a little story that, um, uh, Goff, we've got to mention Mike because Mike was with me on Tuesday, Goff. All right, good for him. Uh, yeah, right. So, um, there's a little story here, and, and um, Mike went off on a bit of a tangent, right? But he didn't have the information that I had on the computer. So um, he basically said, well, you know, his daughter had been left behind with his, with his granddaughter. Um, and they would, be like, they would be like the royalty of the settlement because, you know, John White had been the ipso facto governor who had left them there. Who had then gone back to Europe to get supplies? You can imagine. You can imagine, right? It's 1588, right? And his own daughter is being surrounded by the colonists, and they're saying, "Look, your dad hasn't arrived. He's let us down." And you can imagine her calming everybody down and saying, "My dad will be back. He's the governor. My dad, dad will be back. He promised." So you can imagine. It's now 1589. The same conversation is had two years later. Right after after her own dad had left, and it's like thinking, right, what are you gonna do now? Um, and Mike Bob probably might come up with the idea that um, his own daughter felt scorned. Um, her own dad hadn't have returned. There was a lot of pressure, and it's the idea that she made the decision and took the colony elsewhere, because because there there was th this was in a period of war. Uh, this was in a period of war, and with with there being a period of war, there would be Spanish pirates ab abound. Uh, there would be a Spanish pirate uh, uh, privateers abound, but this site was really well hidden. But then again, this. It, I, I, I actually thought maybe, away from this conversation I had with Mike, I, I actually thought maybe that um, these people had been placed into slavery, which, which would make common sense. You know, sl slavery wasn't um, abolished um, in England until 1807. So sla slavery, and that, <coughs> the word that I'm told to use now, slavery was legal, right? Slavery was the legal thing to do, so it wouldn't have stopped the Spanish going up to the colony and, and taking everybody off as slaves, and that would have been it. However, when you're enslaving people, you've got to take them away by force, right? So that's an interesting point. You need to take them away by force. You're not going to you're not going to stand around and say, "Look, guys, right? We're going to take you into slavery, right?" But you've got to take your buildings down beforehand and you've got to bring all the stuff that you want with you, right? That's not how slavery works. It re it's really not. So that there's not a brutal effect in regards to what's going on with, with, this, with this settlement, right? It's, it's not... Um, there, there's something really interesting and, and really painted about what was going on. And there you go, right? I, I'm going to read... I'm going to read the numpty list out. Um, Rosamond, Stav, Chris, and uh, we've got Margaret who, who said that that looks like a TARDIS. And to be honest with you, it does look like a TARDIS, I've got to be honest with you. And, um, you know, th this, is, this is a rather interesting one. Whoever put this illustration together, uh, this, isn't, this, isn't, this isn't John White. John White was actually an artist. 
and we've got a little map that he that he that he's given us which we, which we're going to have a look at so you're looking at this and you're thinking there's something not quite right with this and what's not right with it is that uh, these 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 buildings um look as if they're like round houses and then somebody said no they don't they they, they look quite angular and i said well they don't really they actually look like round houses they look conical shaped except for the one in the middle and this does not look like a typical colony that colonists would build it really really doesn't I, I've, I've never seen colonists in any illustration building anything like this so the reason why this is created is that nobody knew what the colony looked like other than john white but john white had already left before they put most of the buildings so nobody knew what the colony looked like there's no we don't know what the colony looked like so th this is the great frustration um so this this link with the Croatoan people the, the, the Croatoa um rather than the Croatoan people, the Croatoa tribe, the, the that that's that's a really, really interesting one that the these people may have actually started to have some kind of alliance with the um Croatoa uh, people. <coughs> Again, this is that wonderful colour illustration and showing some of the tribes on how they would be pronounced again what what is what is showing here again a little bit more clearer again is the eel trap in the forefront is the fishing vessel towards the right and the hinterland on the island there's a deer you've got other fishing vessels and whoever painted this was trying to show us something else right and there's another settlement over there which is very similar to this settlement right but we're not saying that that settlement over there is an english settlement we're saying that this settlement over there is associated <coughs> with the um dasamongamquepeak tribe as as it's placed down on the map so this this tells us a lot more than than probably we're meant to see now this is another illustration of the settlement do you note that the entranceway is the other way round on this one and and again the buildings don't really fit in with the narrative of a settlement that would be associated with a colony at that time it really really doesn't and there is an issue here that i haven't mentioned yet and the issue here is to do with building skills now we 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 see we see that if these people had integrated with local tribal people they would have not only taken their pottery with them with contents not only taken their language with them not only taken their blood pool with them but they would have also taken their building skills with them and one point to be made is not only are there references to um, blonde haired and blue eyed people in North America that might be associated with the Roanoke colony there's also talk that some of the local tribes within that vicinity built structures that look very different from any other structures anywhere else people started to move away from building round um, house type structures into rectilinear structures now it's not unknown for rectilinear buildings to be built in the north america because when we look at for example the people of um um mesa verde um the pueblo people they're they're, they're building linear structures they're, they're building linear structures with no influence from uh, the western world but it was quite strange that a small number of tribal people actually built in a western way particularly on this seaboard and then surrounded by other tribes that didn't there he is there he is you you can you can imagine right you can imagine that that's john white he's talking to the guy in pink he's saying oh pink doesn't sh suit you but he's, he's saying look try and read this what does this say and you can imagine the guy whispering to the guy in pink, actually, you can't read, can you? And he's giving it a good old go, right? Um, 
and he doesn't have a clue. And then there's this guy going, well, he's a bit of a numpty. Uh, it says Croatoan. Uh, and this guy said, yeah, I, I thought that all along. Yeah, it does say Croatoan. And John White's looking at this bloke saying, well, what does it mean? And then this bloke saying, well, how would he know? He's a bit thick. And the fact of the matter is, they, the, the, um, without the bravado there, you've got, you've got this idea that they've got a word carved onto the trees that, that nobody really understands. However, looking in the footnotes from 2012, it's believed that John White knew all along what the words Crow Atoan meant. And it is discussed that John White knew that it was a message from his own granddaughter. Um, well, not his own granddaughter, his own daughter, on behalf of his granddaughter. Uh, he, th he thought it was a message to say that they had actually gone to live with the um, Croatoan tribe. This is what they thought. And then, then you've got the other carving on the sea saying C-R-O. It's a sign saying that they moved in with the local tribe. Now, in all the notes that I've actually read, nobody asks the following question. 120 people is a small number of people to establish a colony. It's a very small number of people. So if you if you if you try and sort of get away from the fact that there'd be religious people there that wouldn't work, there would be uh, mothers with children that would find it difficult to build palisades and things like that. There'd be people that were ill that would leave a very small number of people to build a colony. Um, and with a few deaths over maybe a couple of years, it would have meant that they would have been very, very vulnerable. And also, without gunpowder, you, you, you know, after, if, if, they, if they fired off their muskets on a, on a temporary basis and they, 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 they went hunting, they fired their muskets, gunpowder is going to go down quite quickly. So they're, they're going to be without their weapons to fire. They would have been left with swords and would be able to improvise spears. But it would have been no defence um, from an attack of of Native Americans. But, but, I've just said it. I've, I've just fallen for the trap that I've deliberately fallen for. Every single description paints that the people of North America um, were people that um, were very warlike. Uh, it every single text that you read and not everyone but I'm just generalizing every text would read that they would would be very hostile and wouldn't want to help you out and if you're if you're alone and vulnerable they would kill you and they were very evil pagan people and, and Native Americans couldn't be trusted and so on and so on but if you, if you read into the subtext you think about the story of the Mayflower and you think about the crew and the, and the um, those individuals associated with the Mayflower with the people that they come across and then then you then you talk about the other descriptions um, of people going to North America and they're helped in North America to survive by food that the Native Americans are giving them and it starts to paint a completely different perspective to who the Native American peoples were were the Native Americans always warring? Would they always want to do you harm? And the answer is no, no, and no again. There would have been tribes that would have been hostile, hostile to other tribes. There would have been tribes hostile to Westerners. But they all, they all weren't like that. And a casing point is as follows. In 1521, when the conquistadors finally reached the city of Montezuma, they were welcomed into their city as gods. The, uh, the Aztecs were very friendly <coughs> and, the, and the mayor who still surrounded the landscape, the Aztecs and the mayor were very friendly towards the Westerners. And then after a while they, they turned against the Westerners because the Westerners were killing them. That's what happened. And maybe, maybe stories about Native Americans being nasty, sinister people uh, and not very friendly and very hostile and very savage were as an account of what we did to them. They were only responding to what we had, had done unto them. So maybe John White had a backup plan. Maybe John White said to his own daughter, if we don't return next year, 
you need to go and live with the Croatoan people. Maybe there was a plan. John White knew. He had the answer. And this is what we're thinking about. Two, uh, 2012, from sources that we're looking at, he knew. And the, the answer is on a map. We've actually got a treasure map. And guess what, Keith? X marks the spot. Hooray. But nobody chose to look. We've got a treasure map that that, not a treasure map, so go away. We've got a map that that man actually produced. A, a piece of living history that tells us a story. Now, look, looking at looking at this, if we can zoom in a bit more, we're going to lose a bit of perspective, right? That there, that there is a really is a is a really good map, right? That's actually created the one on the right. The one on the right is actually created by John White, right? That's created by John White. And over here, can you see a little bit of a blemish on the map? Yep. Well, when we when we look at the when we look at the other version, which is focused in, that blemish on the map is actually a piece of uh, parchment that's been placed over the actual covering something underneath it. And they've only spotted that now, well, in the last decade. Now, the the other thing the other thing that you could see, obviously, we've got a, a, a nice nice tribal geezer on the right. Um, and what we've got is this. That's that's believed to have been a representation of his own daughter, Virginia, his own granddaughter, Virginia Dare. Virginia Dare was the archetypal first European to be born in North America. There she is with her voluptuous breasts showing out to be the first Westerner to be born in North America. That's what that's about on the left. There's good old Queenie. Um, and I'm sure in, in that you can see um, the likes of Sir Walter Raleigh. Um, and our friend John White on the right there, and this map that I've actually shown you. And drum roll, what the hell is this in front? This in front is a representation of some of the buildings that have been found um, in the local landscape that may have been influenced by the builders that were once at Roan Oak <laughs> Island. Um, and those types of building skills didn't come from nowhere. Okay, I, I've got to be very careful with what I'm saying. I'm not saying for one moment that people within the landscape weren't capable of building like Westerners and building buildings that were far superior to Western builders, as we see with um, the likes of Mesa Verde. I'm not actually saying that they couldn't. But what I'm trying to say is that you've got all these local tribal people building roundhouses and, 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 and things that were very different. And then you've got one or two tribal people building buildings like this. Why? Why, why did these people... Okay, you, you could assume that everybody are building these linear structures all over the place. And that's great. That's great. That's fine. We'll give them that. Yeah. I'm not putting, my, my, I'm not putting anyone down. But what, I, what I'm trying to say is that there are one or two tribes that are building in Western ways. Um, and that's being recorded. So what we got is got we got lots of little things over time. This is this is showing that we got Roanoke and up in the north west you got Jamestown. So uh, th this is this is itself showing um, giving you an idea of the relationship between Roanoke and Jamestown. So the original plan was I, the thing is the weird thing is is that um, they visited Roanoke on the way to create a colony at Jamestown. Yeah, um, or they they or they were on their way to create a colony at Riley, or they were uh, they were meant to create a, a colony somewhere else. To actually get to Roanoke on the way anywhere, you would naturally have to um, go go near um, Hatteras Island through Reeves and all the rest of it. They were deliberately going to Roanoke in 1587. Maybe John White had a change of heart and he was going to establish an island there, may uh, a colony there, or maybe because his own daughter was pregnant he wanted to get her ashore at Roanoke as soon as possible for her, um, for her to have his granddaughter um, so again sort of a little bit of a, a, a an idea here that you've got one or two trunks left behind and these gentlemen are looking in the trunks and saying there's nothing here Gov and he's going what does this say we've done that one um, oh I, hang on a minute hang on a minute oh, uh, um, Chris, uh, Keith that's me looking in there Right, 
Yeah. Uh, I, I, and there's, there's you looking down, saying, what are you looking for, Carl? Pantaloons? And saying, yeah, of course I am. Certainly. Certainly. This is the way we do it. This is I, the I way. would say that, yeah. Yeah, you would say that, because there's nothing wrong with my pantaloons. <laughs> well, now, when, when I saw them anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, Mich Michelle's trying to buy me a new pirate outfit. Um, which is a bit strange. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's she. You know, I gotta be honest with you. Uh, people have said that I'm weird, and then people have said that Michelle are weird, and and uh, and, and so we're well suited. Yep, yep. That kept, I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah, cool. Anyway, looking at this, this is actually this is actually um, um, illustrations of the excavations at site X. Which we're going to look at after the break, Site X, um, and that's 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 we're not going to go there yet. But if we do, bingo! At Site X, we've we've found this archaeological evidence, um, and that's that's where we're going to go. But I'll just but all of this is typical European pottery, and they're sifting. And this is a type of pottery that they've actually found at Jamestown. Jamestown, which is further north, which is different than this pot. Oh, hang on, which is different from this pottery. This pottery dates from the 1580s, and f and not as late as the 1590s. And that pottery dates from the 1600s. And there's a reason why why I've mentioned that. So, so. What we're going to do now, we, we've got we've got the archaeology um, in the second half, and you know, and obviously, is 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 Roanoke a tragedy? Uh, is is it um, is it something that we should just um, write off as a disaster, or is it something that we now understand that um, that we've actually found archaeological evidence elsewhere? So, what one one thing that I didn't. One thing that I didn't, um, one thing I didn't look at um, on Tuesday was the archaeological excavations they've actually undertaken at Roanoke. So, what when they started excavation excavating on the island of Roanoke, not Site X, in 1887, they did actually find a, a Native American burial site, but nothing that was European. So they excavated there in 1887 at Roanoke. Strangely enough, then um, a chap by the name of Talcott Williams excavated at Roanoke in 1897. Actually at the site of the fort itself. And guess what they found, Keith? Nothing. Oh. They, they found no bodies. Um, well, actually, when I say nothing, they found nothing of significance. Everything was more or less gone. Now, obviously, all that talk about all that talk about the people being massacred um, would would leave evidence. You know, there would be evidence of charring. Um, but in the nineteen nineties, they they found a, a positive link to another locality that they were excavating. Um, and that's where we're going to go to um, after the break. And, and strangely enough, they, they found a, um, a ring on an excavation at a place known as Buxton, North Carolina. Um, and when they found this ring, they found that this gold signet ring related to the heraldry of the Kendall family that had been along with the expedition. And they, fa they found this wonderful ring. One second. They, they, they found this wonderful ring. Um, and they undertook some x-ray analysis in 2017. It proved the ring was brass, uh, not gold. So, and experts could... Um, and and this, this heraldic link with the Kendall family... Um, they do believe it's linked with the Kendall family. Some say it's not, but they, they found this ring um, associated with the site of Buxton. But after the break, we're going to go to site X. So what, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to um, just mention this. Whoever's on the phone, I'm going to phone you in a minute. So uh, good. Thank you. See, brilliant. We didn't even get that. So what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to ask, are there any questions? And um 
um, go from there. So let, let's do questions. TARDIS, we got we could bring the TARDIS thing in there. Open the doors of the TARDIS. You're looking into the. There you go. Oh yeah. It's great, you know. Whoa! It's, sh it's great, you know. Yeah. Have you finished now? I suppose so. Can yeah, you go thanks. Back to the picture of the tree. What's that? Can you go back to the picture of the tree? Right, yeah, we, we're going to go back to the picture of the tree. Now, there, there's a there's a point. There's a point I'm going to make um, about that. So let's go back to the picture of the tree. Hang on, share, 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 share. Oh! There. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to spend the time carving into the tree, Croatonia, why can't you also carve gone to or left for? <laughs> right, there, there's, there's two points. I, actually, there's two points here. Um, now, it was carved into the tree, but then again, it's a palisade. But then again, one source. So we've got two carvings. We've got Croa, and we've got the Croa um, Toan. But some other source said there was two carvings of Croa, but not the full Croa Toan. So we don't really know. But So if we go with the original fact that this is Croa um, Toan, carved into this big hunky timber... Right. The reason why it says and doesn't say gone to is because they may have been aware of the Spanish attacking. And the last thing that they wanted was to give away completely where they had gone so that the Spanish would go there and then that would be it. So they, they were probably aware that they, they, they may have been aware, for example, of two things. In, in 1588, they may have been aware that there was something going on in Europe because they would have probably seen that there there are no English ships around, there are no Spanish ships around, everyone seems to have disappeared. And maybe they saw one Spanish ship one day and they thought, right, you know, our guys ain't coming back, my dad's not going to come back, we need to go elsewhere. My dad, dad organised some kind of um, conference with the Croatoan people and they were fairly peaceful we could work with them they could work with us and that would be the way things go now there's a there's a final point with this now this is an ethnicity point that I made on Tuesday right this is a really important point um, and I really I really didn't explore this um, as much as I should have on Tuesday but I'll try and give it a go Back then, it would have been frowned upon for Westerners to have had sexual relations with a Native American, to put it very, very crudely. Um, and if these people had gone to another settlement, you can imagine, you know, that some of the women would have had children via Native Americans and some of the men would have had children via Native American women. And could you imagine as that sort of group of people... Is, is now meeting Westerners, say, in 18... Uh, start again, 1605, maybe a decade later. They, they, they would frown upon those half-caste people, right? And, and basically, those, those, that group of people probably would have said, we'll, we'll put our lot in with the Croa Toa people as they move further into the North Americans. But slowly but surely, that blood pool is going to dissipate, right? Um, so, uh, and the people of Roanoke Island will go from history. But it doesn't mean to say they didn't survive. I, I, I'm thinking that they probably, all the evidence tells us in the archaeology that what we found, and with the work of uh, Professor Mark Horton, that these people actually did survive. So the archaeology is telling us more about the history. I don't think North American historians would have admitted that the first settlers in North America had relations with Native Americans. Could you imagine the, the, the first daughter... Of a, of a Westerner born in North America having a relationship with a Native American and them having children? Could you imagine what impact that would have on the history of North America? So in fact, I, I'm starting to see something. I, it's pushing against me, but I'm starting to see something, that there's something hidden about this history. Mm. Um, and, and there's something very deep. And I don't think it would... Could you, could you imagine any of the... Um, a rhetoric from any um, American politicians saying that, you know, the, our first daughter from Europe actually had a relationship with um, um, a, a Native American, because obviously at that stage, 
there were only small numbers of these colonists, then why not? Because they had integrated. So I know it, that may sound absolute nuts, but I, I think there's a lot to go in with that. It's not the type of thing Americans would like to admit. So, God, that was deep. Yeah. I, I've, I've blown myself out of the water on that one. Yeah. Um, talking about blowing myself out of the water, Goff, have, have you had yeah. the sinking feeling? No, I was going to say, um, you look back in uh, what I've read, all the uh, settlers at that time, the Dutch, the French, the English, and the Spanish that were settling on the eastern seaboard, all struggled. They were totally unprepared, like Darien, totally unprepared for what they were letting them so And without the help of the, the Indians, the, they, didn't, they couldn't survive. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if they integrated with the low indigenous people and just just so mixed and mm. that's what happened that, that's what i think can, can you can you i i completely well i think we are, we're all in agreement on this but can you see that very sort of um that, that statement i've just made about maybe this has been lost in history because the the, the settlers may have had started families with native americans oh absolutely yeah it, it yeah. just would have been so frowned upon well, that's what happens isn't it yeah in, in britain yes historically so you yeah, know of mm. course yeah. But would it have been frowned upon then? I mean, you're talking about it from a perspective of the 20th century and the 19th century yes, and the 18th century. Yes, I am. Yeah. But it wouldn't necessarily have been frowned upon in in the 15th and 16th century, would it? You know, it could have been totally it acceptable. <laughs> it was a matter of survival for the settlers. Yeah. Yes. You know, if you're a woman... It, Especially in those days, and some big strong Indians going to help you. Well, there you go. Say no more, because your dad's gone away. Well, and, and also, also the other thing as well is the other the other thing as well is you know it, it goes the other way. There's this big strong Native American woman, and and me and yeah. Keith want to go for that. You know, we're, absolutely, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're in there. Yes, that's right. That's absolutely right. I wouldn't be able to understand her. She wouldn't be able to understand me. We could have a perfect relationship. The language of love. And like, she would be shouting and screaming Not at, at me. All. I'd be shouting and screaming at her. Um, and nobody would understand a thing. And we would kiss and make up and more children. That's great. I love it. Yeah. But you don't count, <laughs> Carl, so you're not like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. And, I, 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 I note. I note. I note. And yeah. what about conversion to Christianity as well? You know, that's not been in the notes at all. That, that I haven't even, we haven't even mentioned Christianity. We've not even, this is the fourth time I've done that. We've not mentioned the word Christianity. And the thing is, that's not even come up anywhere. I, I've got no, you know what I mentioned about a priest earlier on? I, I, I presumed um, it wouldn't have been a priest either because th that would have been Catholic. Um, no, they, would have pro they would have been strong Protestants, wouldn't they? Yeah, they, 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 these would have been Protestants. So, yeah. I mentioned that, but I didn't actually mention Christianity, and that's the point, that there's no mention of Christianity with any of this. Um, there's nothing about converting Christians. Now, that is a really good point, Keith, because when, when we look at um, Spain, it's, it's, it's all, the Spanish always justified, and the Portuguese, they always justified, remember this from school, going to South America to convert pagans into Christians. They justified their role there by doing that that that's that's immediately in there you go in there and the priests are in there straight away but they're not in this at all this is a different story and darian's a different story as well um i'll start again darian's the same story as this but darian's also a different story from the spanish because we don't mention religion in re regards to darian either and they would have been protestants protestants as well mm, yeah 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 mm. So uh, we've done Chris. I've done Chris. Um, let's have Arnold. Was there any mention of any discord within the, um, the community there? There's obviously this discord of panic between, you know, we're, we're a bit worried about the, the Native Americans. But there's no there's no discussion of discord um, within uh, the colony. But you can imagine, you can imagine a conversation, can't you? Um, you can imagine... Um, John White's daughter and her husband and um, sat in one camp saying, look, my dad's going to come back. <coughs> and the other camp go, they're going to say, no, he's not. And then you might have a religious camp saying, oh, we're just going to go out and convert Christians, right? Maybe I've just chucked that in there, which is completely... Yeah, perhaps, perhaps John White didn't so much leave her there as the rest of the colonists holding her there to make sure that he came back. 
Do, do, you know, do you know what? Do you know what? That that is absolutely so. That that makes so much sense. Uh, that really, really does. This is this is. I sort of said that, but I didn't say it. I didn't really understand what I was trying to say. But that that is a re real good point because what we're saying, yeah, we're we're going we're, we're going to keep her as a hostage. Uh, uh, the way I said it, I, I'm I'm, you know, I'm keeping her here because. <coughs> This is this is my pledge to the colony. But you've turned that around. I like that where we're keeping her as a hostage. I really like that because there was some friction like that with Darian that, that you know, you know, we, we've it, they, there was infighting on Darian and there was factions. There was two factions on Darian. Uh, there was one group of people who moved to the fort. And there was one group of people who went over here and they had different ambitions. And by the time they worked this out, the Spanish had arrived and it all went to pot. Yeah. Um, and finally, what we're going to do before we have a break, right? We're going to do the chuckle brother, um, who's Jim, <laughs> and, and the and the, and the witch from hell, um, uh, whichever that one can be. They they can alternate that one, um, right? Give, give and, and guess what? Goff's already muted it. Right? Go on. Um, <laughs> you, you... We got a list. We got a list of things. But okay, okay, oh stop a minute. What we'll do, Andrea? Oh, not Andrea. Oh, what's the other woman, Karen? Um. What we'll do, Karen? If if you're the elected speaker, right? We'll just hear from you, then we'll have our break. Go for it. Okay, right. So we've got two theories. So one, you're saying they possibly were integrated with the native tribes. Yes. And um, if that, if that had happened, there was true integration. Wouldn't you have expected that the natives would then have picked up other European skills besides simply the building? For example, maybe writing, yeah. tools, yeah. the tools, etc. Yeah. So the fact that there's it just seems to be the buildings would maybe go against the fact that there's been integration. Okay. And we also say, given that it was the colony was set up on an island. They then all all the pictures show this massive great palisade around the houses, so which suggests that the natives were hostile. Otherwise, why would you need those defences? That's a lot of defences, an island and a palisade. Yeah, I, but the other thing as well is it might just be a matter to defend against attack from pirates and Spanish as well. So yeah, I, I do I do see what you're saying. The the one the one point is. Um, we, we've got the, the first palisade being constructed in with the first fort, um, and then we, we've got um, Grenville's men, some being left there, and they disappear, and some bugger off on a ship, and all the rest of it. But we, we, we've got um, that. Then, then we've got uh, the likes of 1587. We've got this this palisade again, um, and there, there was also talk about you know John White. Uh, with with the hostility with the natives, and they come to some kind of agreement or, or peace settlement. Um, but it might have just been what we did. What we did in Europe at that stage was automatically build defences. This is what we did. You know, it, it's a bit like a Roman fort. Um, we might we might have a um, we might have a palisade around a Roman fort, but we might not need it. And this is one thing I discuss in my in my latest book. I, I discuss that. By the way, um, oh, by the way, I'm showing you this, guys. Hang on a minute. This, this, this. There. Look at that. There's there's the front of my new book. Ooh. There you go. Is there, there it is. And there I am. There. Oh, there there I am. Looking absolutely wonderful. So yeah. <laughs> get it Stop without looking at you. <laughs> So, any, any, so have you got anything else to say before we have oh, a yeah, yeah. word? Sorry, hang on. Go on, I'm quick, quick, quick. <laughs> Some of us have got right, You said that they found that ring in Buxton. Where is that in relation to the island? Um. Oh God, 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 God. Um. I did, did, didn't I give the county? Hang, no. hang on, hang on, man. Let, 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 let me give, let me give the. Uh, da, 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 da. Hang on, I got, I got, I got it here. I did actually. I mentioned that in passing. Hang on, down, 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 down. Hang on, I will get that. Hang on, one second. Give me thirty seconds. Dude. <laughs> so you throw, you throw me now completely. Okay, uh, we'll right, do yeah. one while we're waiting. Right, on, Jim, we'll uh, could the natives be cannibals? And eat them all. They would have left the bones, you numpty. <laughs> not, not where they found them. They would have been sort of um, put in a stewing pot, wouldn't they? <laughs> oh, shut up! 
Yeah. No, that that's really negative. Basically, Cape Creek, Buxton, North Carolina. So it's really nearby. How large is the Roanoke Island? Um. Oh God, hang on, you bloody hell! It's a, you're really checking the bloody questions in now. In all it's my quite relevant, yeah. really. Hang on, oh, hang on. If they're I'm... trying to survive on it. Hang on. <laughs> Um, it, it's oh god, I've, I've got that. I've got this settlement around two acres in area. Um, and oh god, I don't, I don't actually have the scale of the island. I do apologize. You're gonna have to look that up for next week. There were there were three or two other settlements shown on one of the maps that you showed, and there was also grapes being grown in another area. Yes, you are right. Uh, and that wasn't protected, so it, that, that would suggest that. Perhaps you know it was. They were quite free to walk around and grow their grapes. <laughs> yeah, grow, that, that sounds good. The the thing is, I th I think I think the thing with the Palisade is a bit of a red herring. So yeah, um, um, yeah, there is other stuff. Um, we, we've got other crops and other things being planted. Tobacco's being planted as well. We've got um, you know in my other notes we've got tobacco being mentioned. So that's your homework. I'm gonna have a break now. We'll be back after the break. Right. <laughs>
Cold. That tasty soup goff. Yeah. Just <laughs> made it. No. Oh, very nice too. Pea soup. Oh, very good. Pea and ham or just pea? Just pea. Yeah. Cold, isn't it? It is, yeah. I suddenly felt cold sitting here. Yes, yeah, so I put a jumper on. Yes, beautiful blue sky, but very uh, nippy, I'm afraid, with it. Yeah. What's that? Not me. Someone's phone or I don't know, an alarm clock. Mm. Oh. That's Chrissy's phone, isn't it? Many people at Bolton Bridge when you went. Um, 
there was a, a dad with a couple of kids, and that was it. There's a lot of talk, people talking about Bovinson Beach these days. In what regard? Well, just people didn't it's even know it was there. there. Just hear people. Right. Right, yeah, yeah. Summer House Point and all that. Yeah, that's it. It's lovely. I mean, it's a lovely walk down there. And then, uh, yeah, just, as Jane was saying, they've cleared all the area around the Summer House now. So it's a lot easier to get access to it and have a walk around. So uh, easy access down to the beach, although it's not really a beach. There's no sand down there. It's all rock. But, uh, still a beach, isn't it? Yeah, it's still open and, you know, nobody there. So uh, normally you used to get a lot of fishermen down there, you know, anglers. Yeah, I think the power station and the warm water and all the rest of it. And the uh, lookout tower is still up there as well. But I think it's closed now. I don't think there's any. All right. So if you want a nice walk, it's a nice walk down there. Yes. It's not too far for you, is it? And it takes about 40 minutes to walk down there. Very nice. Probably a couple of miles. So, yeah, lovely. Hi Keith, I just want to mention something. There's an auction today up in Lancashire and they got a, a map of the Battle of Waterloo um, they're selling, an early, oh, early map produced. So um, I'll put a bid on it, so I don't know, I don't know what it'll go for. All right, how early is it then? It's 1800s, I think it was not done just after the battle, I think, really, because it, some, it shows out where the regiments were in right. the battlefield and which, who the reg regiments were. And it's a two piece map, and some of it's been coloured. So it's an early day 1800 map. Oh, right. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think I've got two or three maps up on the wall in my other, in my other dens, and uh, some of the very early books had very good maps in. <coughs> Well, they're all hanging. If, 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 if I win it, I'll, I'll photograph it and send you a copy. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always interested in more maps. Yeah. Don't bid against each other. That won't yeah, be good. Yeah, don't <laughs> crack the up now. Is this an eBay map? No, it's um, the sale is a, is a website called thesaleroom.com, and you can log into um, auctions that are going on around the country. And you oh, just right. put in what you're interested in looking for, and it'll show you anywhere in the country where the items are coming up for sale. Oh, so. Cool. Um, I just happened to came across this one in Lancashire. It was a country house sale, and there's oh, a lot of yes. interesting items in this house. Yeah, and there yes. was there's a lovely little sculpture of a kingfisher on this um, thing. I thought it would look nice by the pond, so I put a, a bid in for thirty pounds, and it went for three hundred and sixty. <laughs> <laughs> so I was outdone a bit there. <laughs> oh dear, yes, that's the trouble. Isn't it? You're never sure quite what's going to, you know, how much they're going to go for. What was the name of the site again? Um, it's saleroom.com com. oh I'll have to have a look at that and you can register and then you what you can do is you just put in what you're looking for in the search and it will show you auctions all around the country yeah. they've got yeah. items and there's some there's some Roman stuff as well going for sale and yeah, uh, yeah also uh, oh it's amazing what you find that's it well, I'm looking to get a brown uh, a brown best at some time so uh, ah. uh, but they go for around four or five thousand normally so uh, but, you but, never know. No, exactly. Some of these places you don't get many people bidding for them. So that's you right. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you get those from?
There you are. That's one I had. I've just got framed up. I don't know if you can see that. That's of Waterloo. Yeah, it's similar to that map. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. yeah. This is an old one again. It's got all the regiments on there and everything like that. Mm, brilliant. It's lovely, yeah. Sorry, cat. Also, you find some of the early medals as well on the on the um, auction sites. You know, going from the eighteen hundreds. Pretty. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've I've got a Waterloo medal, so uh, I managed ah. to buy one of those. So that's good. But, uh, are you into collecting? I'm, I'm very busy oh, selling. I don't collecting. <laughs> <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> oh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm sort of buying and selling dinky cars. Oh, yeah. dinky cars. Oh, cars oh yeah. cameras as well. Just, oh, I put this camera up. Um, it was in, um, up in Newark, a little auction place in a, a converted church, funny enough. And um, it was a little Kodak uh, 19, 1912 to 19. Oh, so the boxy, was, like the boxy type. Yeah, with little pull-out bells, mm. right? And they probably used it in the First World War. I think they were issued to soldiers in the First World War to record things, you know. Oh. And I got this thing for 10 quid. And I thought, oh, that's nice. And then I thought, oh, there's a few scratches. I've got some glossy paint, painted up all the scratches. And I um, put some watch oil on the shutter, so yeah, the shutter really worked really well. It's got a ball bearing shutter, Kodak ball bearing shutter in it. Hello, <laughs> is it you I'm looking for? Yeah, you quit. Wow. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, that's <laughs> when I played with them. And, and don't, don't tell me you've had to put up with those, yeah. that box. Well, I just want to be, just now actually, I'll just be this week, actually, I've just got to pay for it this next week. I don't um, want to know what you've been paying for. Do you know what I mean? I'm not I'm interested. in the one I've got from Vinny. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay a little bit more for it. Well, it wasn't, yeah, I paid about 25 quid for that thing. Yeah. Works out. So if I can sell that for 60 quid, you know, you can yeah. get a yeah. quid profit on that. Yeah. So, and this one, had, well, when I sold for 68, it had a little screw thing, you see. It was holding, you know, those little viewfinders, glass viewfinders. You should yeah. take yeah. Well, the bit of screwing that one was missing. And What's I, I, I sold it. I said, you know, it's missing. It still went for that money. So I was really mm. surprised. Well, this one's in bed. And there's a film in it as well. It, there's a film There's pictures. And then, in the back, it shows you, the, on the film, you've got numbers on the back of the film, shows yeah. you a little red window. And there's a number, and I think, crap, there's a film still in this camera. Wow. So, um, Oh, can it process? Yeah. Yeah. There's a company in Gloucester that does specialise in processing old films, mm. probably an old um, Ilford film or something. Can everybody hear me? Should we crack on? Uh, yeah, quite exciting. Why have we been listening <laughs> to you talking about films for? I'm not interested. I'm really not interested. I don't want to know what you're talking about. And it was about 30 years old. Uh, 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 do you know what? Right, I'm going to bloody mute the buggers. Yeah. I can't be asked. Yeah. I don't want to listen to this crap. I tell you what, right? What boy? He's been going on about talking about films and developing. Why? I, 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 I got other interests, you see. I, I got to be honest with you. Jim has got to be one of the most boring people I've ever met in my life. Oh, that's unkind. Is it? <laughs> well, oh, look at you that. shouldn't be having a chocolate biscuit either. Oh no! Oh no! It's not chocolate! Oh, it's not! It's not chocolate! Oh, you're lying! Yeah, get on with it. I right. believe it's not chocolate. <laughs> it's a very naughty boy! Right. No, oh, um. Are you all ready for the assembly elections next month? What elections? Yeah. Glad Cymru. Oh, God! I'm, I'm glad you. It's, I'm glad you're voting for Glad. I, I, uh... Vote for me. Vote for me. But for you. Vote for you. Yes. The free beer. Free beer party. Yes. Free. No, I. I can beat that. Me and Keith are doing free drugs. Oh, not again. We get them now, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get over sixty and you get as much drugs as you want. Yeah. Look, look at look at the state of Arnold. He, he, he's a, he's obviously a witness to all the drugs he takes. <laughs> and, and 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 look look at Chris. She's looking really good on those drugs. <laughs> I, I I really I really don't know what I've just said, Chris. I don't know if that's insulting or it's just. We like, need that sort Don't of take any drugs. <laughs> I have a clean body. Ow. 
Yeah, me and Goff know about your clean body. Um, right, okay, let, let's just... Uh, uh, do you know what, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in a bit of a mess a minute. All right, here we go, like, like always. Let, let's just get straight into these images. Um, and um, yes, hang on. L share. Share. Why, oh, why, Delilah? Right, so... I, I do believe, I do believe this is recording now, which I'm just going to double check and recording. Are we recording? Uh, oh, resume recording. We're not recording. Oh, my God. That, that would have been very fateful. So, I think, I think before, this has been a very hard topic to do because there's been a lot of assumption, but then the archaeology seems to come into its own. Own. And the archaeology seems to give answers where the history cannot give those answers. So we've got archaeological work going on. Um, and I can obviously put a little bit of a link in there because I, I know one of the archaeologists who's been working within that landscape of lost colonies. But I think the word lost colonies is more that the colony was lost in time rather than the people were lost. And I think, and, and I think that point of me trying to connect the people of, you know, the people of Darien with the people at Roanoke, with the people of England and Scotland is more owning the subject than it is sort of saying, you know, this is an American problem, you know, it's American archaeology when it's not, it's not Native American archaeology in that sense it's it's english archaeology within a native american plane and hopefully i've been trying to do that so we've got the pottery in front of us some of the pottery found at site x that we're going to look at now the the frechen brown stoneware comes from germany modern day germany green glaze surrey hampshire border wear all these glazed a nice london red wear a bit like samian wear actually it's a really fine type of pottery uh, yellow glazed Surrey Hampshire border wear all of these and the Essex and the uh, uh, Marin camp all, all, all these types of potteries as for storage um, and these have been found at a site 50 miles away from Roanoke these do not date from the period of this piece of pottery those date from the period that we're talking about of Roanoke now these would have to date from the 1580s which they date from they could not date from the 1590s to have any, any link with the settlers at Roanoke, because at that point, they went from the radar. So obviously the first ship that they, they came across was, was John White's, and um, John White came across nobody there in 1590. So, going back to my notes, and this is where we are. Archaeologists may have finally solved the mystery of the disappearance of Roanoke's lost colony, and the article is dated November the 6th, 2010. That's a bit old, isn't it? No, it's not. November the 6th, 2020. So, you know, this itself is, is COVID. This is year one in COVID. Uh, this is a few months ago that this article is dated from. Head, other headline news here um, is that the fate of Roanoke's 115 settlers have been a mystery for centuries and now the archaeology hopefully has proved where we are with it. So it's Site X. Um, the work has been done by the First Colony Foundation. Now, that is a really interesting word, First Colony Foundation. So, you know... Headline, we know all this, just recapping, 1588, the English settlers reached the New World and established a colony uh, on the island of Roanoke in what is now part of North Carolina, only to mysteriously disappear. Technically, that's wrong, because the first people who went there in 1585, um, they went back with John White um, and Sir Walter Raleigh in 1586, and then Grenville turned up with a small garrison um, uh, to sort of look after the site. Those individuals disappear. And then we turn back the following year in 1587 with John White with an abandoned site. Uh, he disappears back, leaves his daughter there. He gets back in 1590. Everyone's gone. So that, that, that's basically it. So the colonist fate has become one of America's most enduring mysteries. No, it's not. It's one of our most enduring mysteries because i'm i've owned this topic it's like nobody talks about 
Darien as being an American mystery. We talk about it as being a Scottish mystery. The, the, the people of Panama couldn't give a two, two figs, really. Um, we should give a fig about this site because it's, it's, it's something... I think, I think what encapsulated everything that I've been trying to say and put across was the very thought that people were assisted at colonies like this and maybe at Darien and the, the people of the Mayflower and we got look at lots of other examples they were assisted by the Native Americans and if it wasn't for the Native Americans simply we would not have seen um, what, what we're looking at in North America today if these people continually attacked every single boat that landed on the shores of the Americas Say, say, for example, Montezuma had said, right, we're not going to have these faggots um, get into our city, right? We're going to wipe them out, right? Before they even get to us, the Spanish would never have landed. If the Inca would have attacked straight away Pizarro's men, that would have been the end of that. If they would have wiped out these individuals from Roanoke straight away... I don't think there would have been an expedition as soon as it was. Things would, have, and they certainly wouldn't have taken their women and children. So, history would have been very different. So, I think the point I was trying to make that these people in North America are more friendly than we make out. They assimilated with the indigenous population in the end, splintered off into multiple camps, as my notes tell us. If that's the case, then, you know, we've, we've answered the, the, the big question of what happened to these settlers. To be honest with you, if we think, right, there's 115, 120 of them, by the time they leave, there's something like 80 of them, because a few have died, disease and all the rest of it. There's 80-odd left. They splinter off into, say, two or three settlements, that's 25, 30 each, whatever, um, in, in, in settlements with um, 200, 300 Native Americans, right? They're going to be soon absorbed. Um, and they're going to disappear from history, but they're not disappeared from the history. They're within the, where, then they become the history of North America. That's a very important point as well. So the ill-fated Walter Raleigh colony. So the only we're told that the only clue left behind was the word Croatoan, uh, which is and and the, another thing to be said is that. Croatoan might represent some of the peoples actually at um, Hatteras Island. So some of them could have actually have gone there as well. This was the research of my friend um, Professor, Professor Mark Horton. But we've got that other site further inland, which we're going to show you, associated with John White's map. And we've got archaeological evidence from there to say this pottery in front of us that got there for some reason. And the other thing as well is, I don't believe that these Native Americans would have thought, right, we're going to massacre these people. What we're going to do if we chuck them all in the water, right? And we take their pottery and all their goods 50 miles down the river, right? You know, it doesn't make sense because the, what I'm trying to get at is a tribal people would have had to have gone knowingly to Roanoke Island wiped out the people, taken all their pottery, put it into boats, going th themselves through hostile territory with other tribes chucking stuff at them. It just doesn't make sense, right? So let's get rid of the, let's try and get rid of the, ho the few hostile Spaniards around, hostile Native Americans, bit of disease and famine, but um, and, and storms, but I do believe that these people did survive. So fragments of early English pottery were found by um, archaeologists uh, at Site X. And the work started to be undertaken in 2012. They, 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 were, they were examining a map that they had found at the British Museum in London that White had painted at the United States, uh, titled La Virginia um, Pa, which is basically the name of his daughter, uh, his granddaughter, the, the first girl to be born in America, Virginia uh, Pa. So, um, so, and that's why we've got the name Virginia, because Virginia is named after John White's daughter. But where did she go? What happened to her? That's a really interesting one. The whole 
whole part of America is named after his, his daughter, his, his granddaughter. Um, and you just, it, it's a really strange story altogether. But anyway, let, let's go on to this map. Let's just have a little look at that map. Um, so we've got to do, to do, do X. There you go. Nice. Look at that. Now, this is actually quite, this is quite a talented map um, by, by our friend John White. So this is done after, after the date of um, 1590. So uh, there, um, Hatteras Island, and there's Roanoke, and these represent tri uh, tribal boats. And what the hell is a ship doing there? Now, this was done by our friend um, John White on board his vessel. It must have been because he's having to get back to the UK. Now, his, his vessel was captured. Um, the Spanish would have a map to where the English settlement was. And can you see that over there? <coughs> it's, it's as clear as day, to be honest with you. Nobody chose to question what that was. And that under X-ray turned out to be a settlement. Now, Keith, Keith knows a tiny. Keith knows more about this than me, but I know a little bit. That to to illustrate forts at that time, they were always seemingly created like that, weren't they? With like a bastion, bastion, almost like a. They weren't. They weren't totally shaped like that, but this is how they would portray a fort. Um, and that is what's under that and this was only worked out um in the year 2012 and then they x-rayed that a bit further and look at that that clearly shows the outline of a fort mm. a military base fort a western fort don't 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 argue with me on this one thinking the native americans would have made, done this right this is a this is a, this is a european indication of a fort the europeans are indicating their own fort right um so this is what we're seeing why why is it why is there a vessel there what the hell is that doing and then then he must have had second thoughts he thought right that vessel's leaving this settlement right yeah he, he knew and why they were covering this up yeah uh, yeah you, there there must have there's more what i'm trying to say there's more to this story there's much more to this story that we don't know and the archaeology can only take us so far, and maybe if there's something in John White's notes in code. And apparently I'm reading in my own notes that there's actually, um, um, there's actually invisible ink writing on this map as well. Um, so th th that's something else. I, did, I haven't really explored that. I, I, I really didn't go any much, much further on that. And this is 50 miles west. This, this is 50 miles west um of roan oak um and they wanted to cover this up from the spanish um and so 50 miles west of roan oak and it said it said in the writings that they were reading in 2012 it, it indicated that john white may have told the settlers if i don't return go 50 miles west um and this is the site that is cited as being the locality of where the colonists finally went to so the the work was actually being undertaken in 2015 so what we're talking about is a revelation opening up now um, as, as we all know, it takes a long time. It takes a long time for history to change. You know, it, it, if somebody says, look, I've got real evidence to say that um, this happened when, in fact, people have been believing something else. You know, people's minds will take a long time for for it to update. So the archaeology has only been really been undertaken in 2015 um, in a in a in a place um as part of north carolina known as bertie canyon uh, bertie county bertie county um, and this interesting enough is 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 close to the settlement of a native american village called metaquam and that site at metaquam is is very much 
is, is very much the, the best link that we've got to people who may have encouraged these people um, from Roanoke to settle here. Now, the, the patch itself was only visible um, under backing light, and obviously they had to x-ray it as well. And they've been to site X and they've used ground penetrating radar re revealing intriguing evidence. And what they did, they, re they, they examined the Native American site, which, and they then examined the site that they believed to be the site of the lost colony. Both localities, Site X and Y, revealed ceramics of a European origin. And the European origin of pottery that dates from the 1580s and not after. So this isn't stuff that's... Act what, what was argued, what was argued was that um, it was argued, if we go back to that, um, that th this pottery, which is relatively different than this pottery right it was believed that colonists from jamestown had sort of gone gone down um to this site and traded with the native americans but the the people at jamestown had pottery from the 1600s they didn't have pottery from the <coughs> 1580s uh, when you when you're going on board board a vessel you're going to take the newest pottery with you with 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 your supplies in you're not going to take old stuff and this old stuff that we're talking about from the 1580s, they do believe clearly proves that we, we can understand um, the existence of where the Roanoke um, settlers finally went to. Um, this is another point. This, this is another point that I really pushed on Tuesday. I'm very excited on Tuesday. I said, well, um, if you're being attacked, the last thing you're going to do is pick up um, storage containers um, and the last thing you're going to do is carry um, vessels full of your foodstuffs if you're being attacked. If, if, you're, if, if you're in a panic, you're just going to leave. You're just going to disappear. You're going to leave everything behind. Fact one, when, when John White got there in 1590, there was very little left behind that was usable. Right, all the usable stuff, all the storage containers and everything and whatever for food or everything it, it was moved. It was gone. Right. So if you're under attack, you're not going to have an opportunity to take anything away, which it was. This must have been a planned departure. They would have had to have had help from the Native Americans to have moved there in the first place. So what has been found so far at this site in Bertie County appears to to me to solve one of the greatest mysteries in early American history. Oh, you can tell that this has been written by um, an American academic, can't you? One of the one of the greatest mysteries in early American history. No, um, early colonial history, more like um, the Odyssey of the Lost English Colony. Um, and and, and, and I'm, I, it's quite sad that this article was written just a few months ago because it says again, one of the greatest mysteries in early American history. You know what I mean? You know, Keith, can you remember those um, conversations that you and I have had with Americans? Mm. Your your history is so old. Our history in America starts in the 1600s. <laughs> so so you you can you've had that type of conversation, have you, Keith? Yeah, 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 yeah. When I was over there, I certainly did. So. You know, this is a problem. This is a big problem when we're looking at the archaeology. And then then you think, well, hang on a minute. If this, is, if this in 1590 is early American history, right, where did the Native Americans come from? Because if it, this must be their early history as well. And it must have just, I tell you what, Keith, they all turned up in 1590 as well with, the, with us. They came from somewhere, you know. Although the experts haven't ruled out that um, the possibility that artifacts um, may have got there via um, other trading links and ways, it, the, the evidence, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of this pottery. It's been deliberately moved there. And, and again, going back to my point, it would mean that a tribe would have to go all the way 50 miles towards Roanoke Island, 
killing everybody, taking all their stuff, then going all the way back through hostile territory themselves. I know I repeated this twice. That doesn't make sense. Or it's the contents of a trading vessel, right? Why would a trading vessel be going in anyway if there's no colony? So we are very confident that these excavations, and some, there was a cuckoo I just heard, are linked to the Roanoke colonies. We have considered all other reasonable possibilities and can find nothing else that fits the evidence. A first colony foundation um, um, that we see represented within the archaeology. Uh, there are people who are skepti skeptical naturally, so they are looking to <coughs> prove rather than seeking to disprove their theory. Um, and you know the, 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 that basically the state the statement is actually from somebody who's skeptical, right? He's saying the archaeologists are going there from the um, um, from the first colony foundation group. They're excavating, and they want to prove that this is a settlement, right? What you should really be doing in archaeology is to actually excavate and then then see if this proves the mm. theory. Mm. Um, so I think science needs to come in a bit more. But unfortunately, folks, this is so new that it's only in the next few years that somebody's going to actually be saying that this is definitely the site of where the settlement moved to. John White seem, seems to think so. He was the guy who left his granddaughter behind. He seems to think so because he's placed something on his map and he's basing it in his own words. He's indicated, go 50 miles somewhere else. This is what they're saying. The colony literally wrote down, they, um, and, and, and this, this is the thing, when, when, you go back to, when you go back to that post, um, when it's got Croatan, um, is that great debate whether that is actually, what does that mean the tribal people of Hatteras Island? um does is that to do with them or croatoan might be the 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 name for native americans who helped you right so this is where they went they went to a site where there were people that actually helped you that's what that might mean so there so you've got the other thing about this place known as um hataras island right and um looking at hataras island what they have found uh, excavating hataras island there they are, with their sieves, and this. Uh, this is actually a sword rapier. This is part of the um, the hilt, and um, this itself is a piece of evidence that comes from Hataras Island, and this dates from roughly around 1590. What are people doing on Hataras Island? Where are they come from? There's no record of anyone else landing on Hataras Island. Who are these people on Hataras Island? Are these people? from Roanoke. So what we might have is two, two groups of people going off to establish settlements. But these these settlements they must have they must have relied upon local assistance. They could not have survived because there's so few of them. Just one attack they're all dead, right? So they must have there must have been friendly tribes assisting them, several friendly tribes assisting them. The Croatan were the friendly tribes that assisted them maybe. So the Lost Colony, there's a book called The Lost Colony and Her Taurus Island, written by a, name, by a guy by the name of Dawson, detailing the findings of the Society of Ten Years of Excavations at Hataras Island, led by Professor Mark Horton, an archaeologist from then Bristol University. He's no longer with Bristol University, he's with, with the uh, University of um, um, Agriculture which is they've got an archaeological department. So Elizabethan rapier found on Hatteras, Hatteras Island. Um, and it, Mark, Horton, Mark Horton's own words, he said, basically the historical evidence says where they went. This is Mark Horton. He says this in September last year now. He is preparing a peer-reviewed study presenting his findings on the island, which include a rapier hilt, um, and evidence from of gunware from the late 1500s and a slate writing tablet fragment. Of course, both recent archaeological finds could e could be evidence of Renoke's fate. So when when we when when we when we finally the last statement to be made um, is that the first colony um, organisation says. Um, in conclusion today, a small group went to um, Croatoan Island, Hataras, in the fall or winter of 1587 to wait for John White to return, while the remainder moved inland. 
and that's probably where his daughter went and his granddaughter um, and that's basically that today so we'll just we'll just um, have a quick look at these images so we've got the uh, that's that, that's a, a sword um, part of a sword rapier that's part of the hilt um, and we've got the map which we've already discussed where the colony is oh we don't need that that's nothing to do with that um, and obviously the sieving and the later pottery <coughs> and this is the earlier stuff from the 1580s so um, what what people want um, is your explanation of how this worked as a hilt for a sword Keith give it to us <laughs> oh. difficult to tell actually from that I, it's difficult to see this, what this the. This is going to be associated with the guard, isn't it? Yeah, it's difficult to know what the bit. Well, it's either been very badly bent out of shape, or it's. I'm not sure what it is. It's. I can't. Okay, don't don't worry about it. It's fine. Sorry, I shouldn't have put you on the spot. No, that's all right. Basically, that's part of an Elizabethan 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 sword hilt. Rapier, yeah. Rapier, yes. Uh, which which were very ornate. Go on. Yeah, it just doesn't look like any I've seen by that fragment I can see. If there was another sort of uh, egg shape on the other side, then I would, it would be more meaningful. But uh, that, as it says, uh, it's difficult to relate that to a, uh, a rapier. Okay, no, that's fine, that's fine. But, but Mark, this is what Mark Horton's saying it is, and yeah, I believe yeah. everything that Mark says. Yeah, I, I obviously, I, I bow so, to his expertise. Yes, he, he's, he's the man who knows. Right, so... Um, Okay, sorry, sorry to put you on the spot there. Right, so um, are there any... i tell you what, right, let's do the Chuckle Brothers' questions, right, and then we'll get the sensible ones. So, Andrea, shoot. Can you throw in English on there? Oh, well, there is oh. oh, right. Have we got any questions? No. Right. No. 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 Okay, then. All right, then. Well, um, what we're going to do, we're going to... Anyway... Um, anyway, thanks for you guys being there today. I'm just going to go to everybody else. So, um, Virginia Dare. Um, yeah, you know that. And a quiz question. D-A-R-E, I suppose. D-A-R-E, that's right there. Virginia Dare. Right, so I'm going to mute you now, guys. So, uh, right, so what we're going to do, Virginia Dare, can you... It, it's it's quite... It, it's really controversial, that, isn't it? The... the um, the wording from an article from a few months ago, um, early American history and associated with the first um, Westerner to settle in North America. I find that very difficult rhetoric to work out even now, but that's what's being used. And Virginia's named after um, the grandson of John White. I just, yeah, blows your mind, doesn't it? This is why I've said at the beginning, this is an English colony. And it's just really difficult to put that in context. Um, Keith? Uh, if, whenever you talk to any Americans, everything is always about them, isn't it? So that's why they call it American history rather than anything else. It's just the way they are. Yeah. Was, what I was going to ask you, have they found any burials, Christian burials on any of these islands? No, nothing at all. Not a single human bone. Very weird, isn't it? You would have thought someone would have died in the two or so years they were there. And obviously well, very Christian. What what we do what we do have is um, I I've got to correct myself just slightly. Um, what we do have is when John John White actually gets to establish the second colony, there is one set of human remains of somebody that's been buried, but w but that was that was somebody associated who had been killed in regards to um, he he knew that person anyway, so. You know, he, I, I think he was involved in burying that person, so that 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 one doesn't count because that's associated with the first colony. So, a bit of a correction there, but that's not that's not really relevant. You, what you were talking about is bones associated with people who yeah, are dying. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. We, 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 yeah. we don't have them. We don't have, them. and that's the weird thing, isn't it? Because um, there would have been people who would have died. There, there's no warfare, right? You yeah. would assume that one or two people would have died anyway. But that's where are they? Right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, and of, uh, they're obviously Christian. They would have been burying. Cremation doesn't come in, as we know, no. into British culture until the um, until um, Rich, uh, William Price b b burns his son in, in Pontypridd in the late uh, 1800s. So we've got no cremation, so they would have been buried. That's it. End of story. There's no question about that. Um, so what about Chris, whose head we can see? And i got to be honest with you, Chris's hair is beautiful. It's white and shiny. I love it. Go on, Chris. 
No, nothing, thanks, Carl. Good, good, good. Talk, oh, okay, um, Alfred, Albert, um, Arnold. Algernon. Uh, no questions for me, very interesting. Algernon, I haven't used heard that, heard that phrase. Algernon, yeah. Algernon. Where, 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 Wasn't where? he a character in um, yeah. Rupert Biggles. Bear? In Biggles. Oh, Algernon in Biggles, yes! Yes, yeah, yeah, that's a very strange one. Talking about Algernon, Goff. Oh, no, well, that's really good. Very interesting. Thanks very much. Thank, thank you very much. And next week, thank you for that, Goff. And next week, what we're going to be looking at, we're back home next week. Oh. Link, what, what we're doing next week is going to link us to King Arthur. Oh. Don't shut up. Oh, God. No, early early medieval archaeology in the context of King Arthur, yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's nice. That sounds good. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. So, we'll That'd do a bit American of that. American prehistory, won't it? Sorry? Well, King Arthur's... That'd be American be... prehistory, won't it? Yes, it would be. American prehistory. Um, <laughs> King Arthur here. Yeah, I can see the link. I can see that. My head's blown now. I don't know what I'm on about. Right. If nobody... <laughs> if nobody... Uh, and, you know, it would be great to see one or two of you on my ghost walk at uh, Cowbridge Battlefield site a week's time. But obviously, if nobody's interested, don't worry about it. Stay in your homes, hobbling around in little corners. What time... What day is it? What time are you meeting and where? It's a Friday evening at the Old Bryn Owen pub at 7.30. And that's at... Um, uh, that's next week. Friday. It's the Bryn Owen pub. It used to be known as the Mulligans or the... Um, oh, the fish restaurant. The old fish restaurant, yeah. Loch Fine. Loch Fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, Carl? Yeah, go for it, darling. chance of you doing a daytime walk history, as history, opposed history. to a, a history walk as opposed to a ghost story at going night? to do another one in Lamb Oh, we, all right then. Look, what I will do, right? If if there's popular a, a thingy me jig that you want me to do, the... arms, yeah. all right then. I, I I will think about it. As long as Goth can go, I I would love. I want Goth. I want to feel and sense Goth's presence in my odor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so oh, okay, we'll do that. If there's no other questions, you've got a couple of seconds to point them out. If not, we'll call it a day. No. Oh. No. Okay. No. Okay, thank you very much, Andrea, Hello. Karen, Kathy, Hello. and Jen. Chris, go. Bye. 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 you, Arnold. Bye. Bye. Missing Bye. you already. Missing you already, darling. Bye. Bye, Daddy. Bye. Bye, Bye, Algernon. Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> he answers to anything, that man. I love him. He's great. <laughs> Bye. Bye bye. Hello, shoes. I'm off. Right, and you, you got lot, lot off, off with Andrea as well. See you guys. Definitely lost the plot now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have. I have lost the Is plot. Is the bigger mic? <laughs> hey, look at the size of that. Hey, look at that. Ooh, I'm stroking it. Ooh, baby. <laughs> does it take batteries? <laughs> Yeah, it it does. It actually, actually, um, Jim, this will be the only Australian you'll ever have because this is made in Australia. Oh, well, yeah. have you sat on it yet? I, I'm saying nothing. That's just disgusting. <laughs> bye. 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 Cheers. Miss you already. Bye. 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 Right. That's uh, that. That's me. And hopefully, um, whoever else is watching on. Um, yes, it, yes, it, it is in real time. Um, so that that yes, so we've we've done and dusted that, and um, um, nobody watching, but uh, we, we tried this on real time in um, online. So I'm going to call this a day. We're going to stop the recording. Thank you very much, whoever's out there. Thanks for watching, um, and that's it. So.